Oh, wait. <laughs> Abracadabra? Oh, never mind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Did everyone have a good Star Wars week? <laughs> Now, funny thing about that, when I went and saw, I saw Harold Thursday, all the nurses there were wearing Star Wars gear, which, by the way, did you guys know Sky works there as well? I actually caught her there and said hi, and we talked a little bit. But yeah, all I like that nursing home now. It's my favorite because they all wore Star Wars stuff. But, but it's not only Star Wars week and better yet, Star Wars month, because I can talk about that after service, but it's also graduation season. Seniors all around the nation, all around the world, <clears throat> whether it be uh, high school seniors, college seniors, trade school students, students in a, who are receiving their graduate degree, or for those who are going to the armed services, will be graduating this season, and hopefully that would lead them to prosperity in their lives. It is an achievement that everyone should, rec that should be recognized by all. These, stu excuse me. These students had grown so much during their schooling. Their minds have been stretched and formed in a way that should meet the needs of the workforce. They had spent many nights up late studying for papers, tests, and finals. These, got, these students essentially lived off caffeine and anxiety their whole schooling career. And as we all know, that's not healthy. If you want to make it even better, anxiety, caffeine, and lots of pizza. Which, by the way, is not good for you. But it does a trick. They have spent many nights like that. They have went through certain events, whether they're good or bad, that have shaped them to this point. And now they are here for the final walk across that stage into the rest of their lives. We should rejoice in that. But not only cheer for what these students have accomplished, but for what God has done for them as well. He laid the stepping stones before them in order to get to the point in their lives where they are today. And he will continue to do so throughout their lives. The question is, will they choose to step on the stone or step into quicksand? But right now, it wasn't easy getting this far in their schooling, getting this far in their life, or getting to the so-called threshold of rock, walking across the stage, receiving a piece of paper, and then wearing a gown with a goofy little hat that has a tassel that constantly gets in your face, and that when you throw it in the air, you got to pray to God you don't poke an eye out. There were rocks in the road, stones on the path, there were trips that made them fall and stumble that bruised their shins and elbows. And yet they kept walking. They kept walking forward over the stones into what? So-called more stones? What are, what are these, how are these stones different from the stone that Pierre talks about here? 
Second, first Peter 2 verses 4 and 5 say, Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. It's the stones that dominate the thinking in these verses. Kind of like how we should have rocks in the brain, so to speak. You know, dumber than a box of rocks, as the world would say. But as we all know, God takes what we deem as stupid and makes it for his kingdom. Come to the stone. Be a stone and live inside those very same stones. Peter gets a little carried away, it seems like. He's got stones in the brain. He's dumber than a box of rocks, metaphorically speaking. And I mean that jokingly. But after all, his name in the Greek, Petros, means rocks. After all, Jesus gave him that name because on Peter, God, Christ was going to form his church with him. And maybe Peter in this uh, letter is trying to return the favor. Come to the living stone. Come, let, come and let him build you into, a, into the house he is trying to build. Be a stone like him, a living stone. Part of the foundation that makes up the kingdom, that makes up the church. Be a part of the structure. Be a stone of the temple made of stone. Be a stone sanctuary. Let worship take place in you. Make worship take place in you. We are both the structure and the activity that takes place inside said structure, which is us. We're building and worshiping that inhabits that same building. You don't know the saying, let your, your body is your temple? What are most temples made out of? Especially Catholic churches. I'm not trying to pick on Catholics, by the way. I mean, you go to St. Louis, you get the Basilica over there. You want to know what that's made out of? Lots of stone and lots of gold. Has everyone been inside the Basilica? That is a, that's actually real gold in there, by the way. Why do you think they make those churches out of stone? We're the building and the worship that inhabits that same building, not only in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense as well, in our own very hearts. It makes your head spin a little bit, though, it seems like. Which is it? What is it? What are we? Who is he, this living stone? What in the world is a living stone? If living water is water that moves, water that bubbles and rushes and flows, what is a living stone, though? Is it like a rock slide, so to speak, that destroys everything in its path? Is it one of those flat stones that you skip across the water? Actually, in Jesus' sense, yeah, it keeps on skipping. But if we were to look at your psalm ring that I gave you earlier, the psalmist also talks about rocks as well. <clears throat> but more importantly, he talks about rocks in a strong and constant and per protective and a refuge sense. The psalm says, you are my rock you and my fortress. There is a sort of commitment here that David writes about. Into your hand I commit my spirit to. My, and my past and my future, and not to mention my present, are all to you. Why else would the singer want to want to hide and want to run and want to be covered up? What was going on during David's early adulthood? Who was chasing him? King Saul, or King Saul, we'll put it that way. He turned to the Lord for it be that rock, that refuge, that sort of protective sense, but also to be molded by set, this said uh, living stone, the stone structure that is to protect him. And yes, a living stone, because there is a desire for action here in the psalm. There isn't just a hiding place. This isn't just a so-called mountain cave to hide in or a rocky fortress to duck into. No, the psalm says, rescue me. 
Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. I have fallen into a trap and need saving. What is my fault? Was it the fault of my enemies? Well, is it? Just get me out. Deliver me. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and my persecutors. Save me. While I sit back and watch you work, it almost seems like. But is that the approach, that the attitude that we should express when calling on the rock and the refuge? No, Peter says. That is not the point. We are to be molded by this said rock, this living rock, this rock structure, so to speak. Peter says that this is not a get out of the way and let God work kind of thing. He wants to talk more about the partnership, the relationship to this living rock, this living rock structure. A partnership of consent. However, we need to want this uh, partnership. We need to allow it to work in us. We need to seek it out. And our task, Peter argues, is to invite the Spirit to use us, to invite God the Father, to invite Christ, the living stone, to us, into us. The potential is within us, Peter says. We are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. But the Spirit waits for our consent, though. We have to allow it to work in us. We are not to assume our own sense of what is morally just and righteous, but what is morally just and righteous in the eyes of God. That is what Peter is calling us into. The Spirit waits for us to be willing participants in the building of the kingdom, to be a part of that cornerstone foundation that Christ has laid for us. We are to help construct the community of faith. Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, not only as individuals, but as a community as well. What do you think the church is? It is a, it is a community of believers. It is a stone, it should be a stone structure that does not falter, that does, that does not fall apart because it was built on a good foundation that was built on a good cornerstone, i.e. Christ. Sorry, I lost my place here. Let yourself be built. Peter pleads with us. Let yourself be molded, be used by Christ. You can't tell yourself that I'm going to go over here or I'm going to go over here and hold up this said wall or I'm going to go frame in this window and door or I'm going to lie down on this path and kind of take it easy a little bit while everyone else does the work. No, you are to let yourself be built. Go where God wants you to go, where the Spirit can use you. You are not in charge. You are a stone for heaven's sake. You are not an architect. You are building material. Be built into something greater than yourself. Something you may not even see right now. Who knows what you will be. He is not done with you yet. You know the old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? That was about the most false saying you'll ever hear in your life. Because you should constantly be molding yourself the way God wants you to be molded. It is kind of like um, uh, the statue David. By my, was it by Michelangelo? Man, that was carved out granite. Anyways, that thing was a big hunk of piece of rock at one point in time. Until the artist slowly and meticulously carved every little detail into that rock to where we get the final statue. That is so beautiful. And it took time, it took patience, it took molding and work. But the rock allowed the artist to do it. It's very much like our relationship to God itself, to allow God work and mold us. For example, if you would have met me when I was a young and dumb teenager kind of thing, I was all for capital punishment. I was like, yeah, kill them, me blankety blank blank blanks. Now... I'm 33 years old, about to be 34. I allow the word of God, the Holy Spirit, to work in my life to where it's like, and where God taught me, it's like, hey, 
They're also my children as well. They admit they just lost their way. Love them as I love them. That's hard. That is talking about grit your teeth, bite the bullet, and love them as Christ loves them. That's hard. And not only that, if they had actually offended you in some sense, it's even harder, given whatever the crime may be. But yet, I ask God, teach me to love as you love. And that is hard. That means you have to put your whole sense of what is right and what is wrong off to the wayward side and focus on what God says. That's hard, because you really want to you want to justify your actions and yada 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 but in reality it's like no I'm wrong that's what it means to be the building material or the be part of the living stone or the structure itself is to allow the builder to mold you to shape you so that when you, the house the structure is built your brick you yourself will be firm that the weather will not uh, harm you in any way but you will be solid and set on a firm foundation itself next to the cornerstone. That is what Peter is getting at. That's what these students have gone through, these schooling years, so that they may be strong for when they go in the workforce, so they'll make, hopefully, the right decisions. I had a friend when I went to Greenville College. Um, her and some of her girlfriends wanted to go out and celebrate graduating from college, and they'd done so by going to get uh, matching tattoos. <laughs> Darn it, you guys, you got me laughing. Anyways, now her parents were pretty old school and was like, told her no, but early 20-something year olds, we think we know it all. So she thought, I'm my own woman now. So it's her and her friends. And to some of you parents, you may hear this as kind of the end of an era when it comes to your parental relationship to your kids because they're going against your wishes. They're going to do what they believe is right. But my friend's tattoo was really small. If you found it, you were intentionally looking for it. It's not like, hey, I want to put a tattoo on my face kind of thing. No, she got a simple little design by Ye Big. It was tucked right behind her ear. And she had long hair, kind of like, uh, I don't know, one's got the hair I'm looking for. Long hair that covered it up. But it was a little simple semicolon with a plus sign next to it. I thought that was a little interesting. So I asked her about it. I was like, now, did you just get that on a whim, or was there a purpose to that tattoo? And she said, yeah, there was a purpose. Because me and her had gone through the same Bible classes and theology classes and everything. And it's like, okay. I want, I want to hear. It's like, it means that after this moment, this graduation, there's more to come. Now, I'm not an English major or anything like that. Quite frankly, even my high school te English teachers still do not like me to this day. But a semicolon means that the sentence is still going on. There's still more to be re read. There's still a history that has not been made in this person's life yet. There is more to come after this moment. The question is, will they step on the right stones? Just when, and it's like with Christ. Just when we think we have Christ nailed down, he pops up off the cross like, hey guys, oh, ignore the wounds, I'm here. Or we may think that we got buried deep down in the grave and we have rolled the stone of death in front of him. We think we got him right then and there. Then he pops up out of nowhere like a jack in the box saying, hey guys, Again, there is more to Christ. There is more to who we are as people. We, are still, we should still allow ourselves to be molded by God's word, to allow the Holy Spirit into our lives, to mold us each and every day, to get rid of the things that make us, I don't know if faulty is the word for it. Yeah, if we're talking about stones, make us faulty stones. But allow the builder, the great architect, to shape us the way we should be shaped this day. Just like these seniors are. Because there's more to him, there's more to Christ, there's more to you guys. You want to know something that can, very, very simple, what you can do to help shape your 
the, the stone here. Tuesdays, there's food pantry. I like going to the food pantry. I get to talk to, I get to mess with Pam. I get to mess with the other ladies and help people. Um, you, this Wednesday at 10 a.m., you can come out to the care center over in um, uh, Coulterville and uh, come worship with us and have communion. You don't even have to serve communion. You can just talk to the residents there. We had 16 there last time in terms of residents there. Boy, they were just ecstatic. I hope it wasn't because of me, but I hope it was because the word of God got brought to them. That, that's what I'm hoping at least. But they were so appreciative of just receiving communion. But just come. All you got to do is just sit and talk and worship God. Very simple. And say, hey, pastor, I know so-and-so is here. You want to go meet him real quick? Yeah, come here, go introduce me. I want to know, I want to meet this person. Real simple. Or even simple as just going to the food pantry. That's how I found out about Betty Zimmerman, just talking to her. Um, simple things. Don't overthink it, just think simply. Simple is better. But simpler is better. Because there's more to you and more to me as a pastor. And I want to see what, not only want to see what's next for these seniors, because I want to see them continue to grow and expand, but I want to see what's next for you guys as a church, as brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to see what's next for you guys. Because for me as a pastor, that's amazing to see. Amen.